Hey there, Lucas here and welcome on our channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can build a web crawler using Rust and Azure Functions. And we are not going to just build a simple crawler that is fetching an HTML site, no. We are going to use Chromium to pre-render the website so that even if the website is heavily depending on JavaScript, we will see the final HTML DOM. So even if you want to crawl a single page application like Google or Bing, you will be able to retrieve the content and process it for your use case. So we need an example and I found uh, this nice demo e-commerce shop created by user dev0125 on GitHub and uh, the special part here is it's an e-commerce shop created using React. Uh, let's have a look. If we open our Chrome developer side panel, we can see during a refresh that many things that are really typical for a single page application. So first of all, it is retrieving the index HTML of the website. And in this index HTML, you will find some scripts. So the browser is loading them in the next step, also loading some images. And it looks like we have uh, two API requests. Uh, one request is to fetch a list of brands and another one is to fetch a list of categories. We can see on the website that there are some brands being used or shown here. And uh, we would like to uh, take a snapshot from this website after everything has been retrieved. Maybe we want to, let's say, parse the name, all the brand names that are on this shop. And we need to build now our crawler in a way that it is basically doing what our browser is doing here. So let's have a look at this from another perspective. So basically what we saw a moment ago are three components. We have the web browser, we have the e-commerce shop user interface, which is a single page application written in React. And we have some kind of API that provides us some dynamic information like categories and brands. And what happened a moment ago when we opened the e-commerce shop is that our browser was asking the web server for the index HTML. The index HTML file had references to other files like JavaScript files and CSS files and images, for example, and it was also fetching some data from an API. We remember the categories and brands. And at this point, React is able to assemble the final website view and uh, manipulate the HTML DOM um, so that it looks like uh, as designed and the website is interactive which means that the website is fully functional, the user can see all the information and use the website as desired. So what we now want to do is we want to emulate actually what the browser is doing here. So we want to create here a crawler that is using Chromium and Chromium here is basically the same engine that you find in the Chrome browser or in Microsoft Edge. And since this is going to be a serverless function, we will make it accessible using an HTTP endpoint. Uh, maybe we will call it uh, pre-render. And behind that, we would add the target URL like shopname.com. It should be actually a post endpoint, but just for the purpose here of showing a little proof of concept, uh, let's keep it simple. We use a get endpoint. The whole idea using Rust for Azure Functions started uh, when I found out that Microsoft launched this uh, quick start guide in 
July 22, um, where they explain how to use Rust code to create an Azure function endpoint. They also have a nice explanation how this is going to work. So actually Azure functions comes with some predefined runtime environments, one for .NET, one for Java, one for Node, I think PowerShell and Python. But Go and Rust are special. Go and Rust applications, when you compile them, are actually executables and they need to be compiled for specific target architecture. And Microsoft decided to support these use cases by allowing us to configure a custom handler, which means if the function host is receiving a trigger, a call, um, it is going to redirect or yeah, call another application, which is here our web server, and it's taking the response and using it to provide an output to a specific target. And we are going to use for our crawler this architecture here in order to make it work using Rust. All right, here we are with the actual code for our function written in Rust. Let's dive only in the important parts. We have here the main function, which uses the warp create to create a web server. And we define two filters, so two routes, one for pre-rendering a page with the default element of HTML and another for specifying a custom element to pre-render. And we have now a function here as well, a method um, that we use to load our application configuration. And this uh, will uh, take care of defining the right uh, port or if the function should be executed in headless mode or not, which can be really useful for us while debugging the application. Um, the main event of this um, uh, application is the pre-render function. This function uses the headless Chrome crate to launch a new instance of Chrome with the specific launch options. And when we then navigate to the target URL, uh, as you can see here, 972, uh, we, uh, the Chrome browser is actually opening this page for us in the background, if it's in headless mode, and it's going to wait for a specific element, uh, depending if we defined it in our get request. And once the content uh, has been uh, uh, fetched because the element is there, we expect the DOM tree to be ready, uh, we return all of this um, as a string. And that's it basically. Uh, regarding the code we have to write for our crawler, so let's remember, um, we actually implemented now this part here. We have a little web server and forget about the functions host right now. We should be able to compile our server and run it locally. Let's try this. So we want to create a release and we should find our artifact, so our executable here. So this is a binary file. It is machine code compiled for uh, the architecture of my MacBook here. And if we uh, try to, to run this release uh, version, uh, it should be now possible for us to use our crawler um, using the pre-render endpoint, the target URL. We want to uh, wait for the HTML tag, so basically it will return immediately. And 
we are not using HTTP, we, we want to use HTTPS. Let's see what happens. All right, we have a re response. And if we look at the details, we can see that it's basically a copy of the, of the index HTML. This is what you would get if you don't pre-render. Um, and in our case, what happened is we were listening or waiting for the HTML tag. So let's take advantage of the network tab here in uh, of the Microsoft Edge browser and activate throttling and see which elements might come up later because remember we have this list API call and this means at some point something needs to be probably initialized. So let's see. Refreshing the page and we see here that the brands list or, or the, this little menu with the brands popped up a bit later. So let's see how this menu is being structured and this seems to be a good candidate of an element that we can use as an indicator that our website is interactive. So let's switch here our parameter to the mini brand and let the crawler do its job. We can see that the HTML DOM tree has been rendered properly and the brands that come from the API call are visible here. But there are a few steps to do if you want to run this using Azure Functions. We just executed this here locally, but we want to execute this as part of our deployment on Azure Functions. We have to set up this Azure Functions folder structure. Um, I choose here get pre-render, indicating that it's a get endpoint. It is also important to make sure that you define the route properly because we always expect to have a target URL, but we may have, so optionally, an element and an HTTP variable in our path. Make sure that this is configured properly because otherwise the Azure function host will reject your request and not pass them to your custom handler. If all of this is in place, we should be able to start the local function and we can see it successfully loaded the Azure function host with the given path. So there seems to be an HTTP trigger endpoint ready to be called. Okay, then let's have a quick test. Let's go to our browser tab change port 3000 to 7071 and let's see what happens and here we go i'm leaving out the deployment part here because it is really well documented here by microsoft in the quick start guide so i would like to share a few more findings with you first of all the cold start times are way better than the same stuff written in javascript i measured two seconds for a crawler uh, using node but with rust we go within 100 milliseconds sometimes even 50 milliseconds and i think that's amazing and probably the reason for that is that the rust binary the executable is just super small compared to a whole node runtime that needs to be started plus your own JavaScript code. So if you have some scenario where you would like to minimize your code start times on Azure functions, maybe that could be really interesting for you. The second finding that I would like to highlight is that we were able to build a serverless application that you can actually also deploy on a Docker container or on bare metal. There is no dependency within the code to Azure Functions. 
all the Azure Functions stuff has been configured. And this could be really interesting for projects where you would like to avoid vendor logins. Probably there are different ways to achieve that, but uh, that one was really comfortable. I didn't have, have to think actually about uh, any Azure Functions SDK. It is all configuration that we applied here. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this tutorial. Leave a subscribe if you would like to see more about this in the future or just write a comment. Maybe you found some bug or you had some idea that you would like to share. Uh, we're always happy to hear from you. See you the next time. Goodbye.